morning and welcome to Love Every Moment, coming to you today from Glen, New Hampshire. Today's verse is Matthew 6. We're finally in Matthew 6. The first verse says, Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. So let's look at the idea of righteousness. This has been mentioned before we saw it in Matthew 5. First in the Beatitudes when it talked about blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied. A little bit later, blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. And even as we read down from there, it says you're blessed for being persecuted for your reward in heaven is great. And that ties in with this reward and we want to hit that again as well. Then a little bit later Jesus ups the ante and says well it's one thing to have the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees who were the greatest human law keepers the world has ever seen. You need to be even more righteous than that. How? Impossible. Not impossible. We have to have God's righteousness but we can't do it through human righteousness. And it continues building up to that climax that we mentioned in the end of Matthew 5, which is love your enemy. Now, as I see this, it says, Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed of them. When I first saw this, I thought, well, this is talking about self-righteousness. And indeed, some of the examples are going to look like that, as it gives some exaggerated examples of uh, Pharisees and hypocrites who uh, pray in a really ridiculous way and give in a ridiculous way and fast in a ridiculous way so that they can be seen. But I think the subtlety is even uh, more so than just the obvious, don't do this for self-righteousness. So I want to take us on a little journey here. Let's look at a uh, cross-reference here. Uh, the first one is going to be 1 John 3.10. It says, By this the children of God uh, and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God. It's pretty black and white. If you're not righteous, you're not of God. Period. And again, remember, that's God's righteousness there nor the one who does not love his brother. If you don't love your brother, you're not a Christian, period. That's it. The love of God is not in you if you're not practicing his righteousness, which includes loving uh, our brother. One thing that we can deduce from this is the only way we can love our brother is to love him face to face, or at least openly. You can't love your brother in secret. I mean, there's no way to do that. So back to our main verse where it says, uh, beware of practicing your righteousness before men. I don't think the before men is the issue. Because again, how can we be humble if we're not humble before men? How can we be giving if we're not giving before men? How can we be loving if we're not loving before men? So that's not really the issue. The issue seems to be this next part, to be noticed by them. So it's the attitude that we're not doing this to be noticed by them. That's the key. Now let's look at another cross-reference that will really tie this together. And that is Colossians 3.23. It says, Whatever you do, do your work heartily, as for the Lord rather than for men. So the main issue is that we do our righteousness for His sake, not for men's sake. And even good things like giving to the poor and loving and everything else, the real motivation is to increase our love with Him. And again, to hit the uh, end, let's look at verse 24. It says, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward. Who? Reward. Great. What reward? Crowns? Well, the Bible does talk about crowns, but in the book of Revelation, we end up casting our crowns before him anyway, so I'm not sure if that's the big reward. No, it says the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. The big reward of practicing our righteousness for him is that we can grow closer to him. Because if we love every moment, we're going to love every moment. I'm your average wretch, and I hope you have a great week.